So today we're going to talk about how to use your, I can get my clicky thing to work. There you go. How to use your secured workstation and to configure SPFX to be able to start building web parts. It is possible. It's just not really documented in the you know, regular documentation on how to do SPFX development. Now, a little disclaimer here. Please consult your organization's policies on what you're allowed to install and not, right? So what I'm trying to do here is not to teach you how to circumvent this, the policies that the organization have put on your workstation, but um, to make it possible for you, if it, it is supported by your organization, for you to be able to start working without having to require administrative privileges to your workstation. So that's a big difference here that my lawyers have advised me to make sure I was saying. All right. So. The other reason why you might want to configure workstation the way I'm going to talk to you about is if you're working as a team. Because one of the things that if you haven't used SPFX yet, every version of SPFX works with potentially a different version of Node.js. So if you're working with a team and maybe you're managing someone else's web part, right? And they built it six months ago on an older version of SPFX. They might be using a completely different version of Node.js. So what if you want to build something in the latest version of, the, of SPFX and 119, which uses the, you know, the latest supported version of Node, and then in the afternoon you need to, to go do a fix on a web part that's, that was built six months ago, the last thing you want to do is have to upgrade the web part to go make that little change. So you need the ability to switch back and forth between versions of Node. And uh, here's an example of the SPFX matrix, where we show you every version of SPFX and every version of Node that's supported. And you can get to that by going to aka.ms slash SPFX matrix. And if you look a little bit down the, the page, let me zoom in here, you'll see the version uh, 119 supports version one uh, well, version 18 of Node. But if I go look at an older version of SPFX here, 17.2 uh, supports version 16.3. So this is the perfect example of what I'm showing you here. And it, it's we're not talking about years and years of difference between versions here. We're talking about potentially months sometimes. So how do we deal with that? Well, here's the problem. When you install Node on your machine, let's say you had administrative privileges or, or your organization well, you know, was kind enough to install Node for you, they'll install a version of Node on your C program files, Node.js. But the problem is you can only have one version of Node installed at once, which is kind of annoying, right? Especially if you're trying to switch back and forth. And to be clear, I don't ever advise anyone to just go randomly take an older version of a web part and upgrade it just to make minor changes, right? Because why? I remember I'm the world's laziest developer. Why would you do extra work to upgrade a web part when all you need to do is maybe maintain it, right? And you don't want to introduce new dependencies and new security issues and new things with every single time that you update it. So I do like to work with multiple versions of Node. And one of the ways that people do that is with something called a node version manager. In fact, there is one node version manager called NVM. But the problem is with NVM, and I know I'm introducing a, ver a product that right away I'm telling you there's a problem with it, but there's a reason. Most people will rely on NVM to run multiple versions of Node. But the problem with NVM is that it installs to C program files Node.js, and then it creates a shortcut to your uh, app data file where it points to um, program uh, Node.js, program files Node.js. When you switch versions, guess what it does? It says, hey, I need permission to make changes to your version of Node, which means you need to have administrative privileges to do that. So Node version manager is fantastic if you had the administrator privilege but it's not so amazing if you uh, don't have administrative privileges to your workstation. Now, there is another solution. So instead of using NVM, 
look at something called NVS, Node Version Switcher, I guess. I'm not very good with acronyms. Uh, and Node Version Switcher is something that's available on GitHub. So you can go to github.com slash jsonjin slash NVS to install the version of Node Version Switcher. And the cool thing about that is that uh, it gives you an installer that you can use right away. It also gives you instructions on how to install it using Winget if you have Winget installed on your machine. And it gives you instructions on how to install it manually as well. So if anything's blocking you, as long as you have some access to your machine to be able to write some files on your per on your personal folders, you can actually install NVS and you can make it work. And they walk you through all the steps. So now that's great because you're able to start using an old version switcher on a machine where you don't have administrative privileges. Let me show you an example of this. So here I have um, SPFX, my SPFX folder. And if I type NVS menu, right away it shows me the versions of Node that I have already installed, and it gives me the ability to install a new version. Not sure what's happening here with my, there you go. I can say install more versions, and then I can go through all the versions that are available. Um, to me. Now, of course, if you're going to an older version of Node, you're going to be scrolling for a while, but it is possible for you to just go and type the version number that you want to use as well. So once you select the key that you, the, the version that you want, so I'll use uh, 1821. What it does is it starts downloading it for you and it will automatically install it for you. Now it's not going to activate it right away. You have to activate it um, because, again, it's designed to switch. But the cool thing is now I should be able to just type, oops, NVS menu, and it will show me the latest version. And if I type node-v, it's now showing me the version that I'm running is the version I just installed. And again, this was done without having administrative privileges to my machine. Now, if I uh, look at a side-by-side -side comparison here, so um, if I run NVM 1821 and I install it and I say node, right? It'll tell me, okay, yeah, you're running 1821. And I know it's a little small to, to show, but one thing I wanted to show is the cool thing about NVS is it completely sets up a different environment with every instance of your terminal that you create. So right side by side here, if I open another terminal, and I run another instance of NVS or another version of Node. See, it tells me Node doesn't exist, but I just had a terminal window open. If I done, if I do NVS uh, menu and I install a new version of Node, side by side again, this is two different instances of a uh, terminal. I'm able to have two different versions running side by side. This can start enabling you to do some really cool stuff. Because what if you had two versions of Visual Studio Code open, one which is the latest version, that's a project you're working on, and one is a sample that you want to see how they're doing it. And the sample was built in an older version of a, uh, SVFX, running an older version of Node, and the version you're working on is a newer version of Node and SVFX. And we'll actually show you that very shortly. All right, so the other thing that I can do if I know that all the time I'm going to be working on a basic version of Node, like 118 or something like that, I can just type NVS link. And what that will do is we'll say, when you don't know what version of Node to use, this is the default version I want you to use. And that can be really powerful as well, because trust me, when you first get started with NVS, it can be annoying every time you launch a window that it goes like, I don't know what Node is. Um, so you do NVS link, it'll have a default version. Uh, and that's great because you can save some time. Now, the cool thing about doing this, so if I do again NVS link, it'll enable the version that I want to use. But the cool thing about that is if I go now to uh, my project, I've got the sniffles today, and I look at node version, right? I've got version 1821. Now, if I switch to Visual Studio Code, and again, the purpose of this presentation is how to set up your workstation without ad having administrative privileges. You may not have Visual Studio Code installed in your machine. 
And you may be in a position where you have to beg the IT gods to install Visual Studio Code for you. But luckily, Visual Studio Code, if you go to code.visualstudio.com slash download, you can actually download. Most people will just usually kind of use the default option. Um, this one, right? But if you actually go down in the options, you'll see that there's a version for user install. And that is the version that you can install as a user without administrative privileges. And that is cool. Um, and that's good for locked workstations and things like that. Because it's really acting as if you were installing a document in your documents folder, right? And hopefully your organization doesn't stop you from installing, creating documents in your documents folder. Although I wouldn't, wouldn't guarantee that's always the case. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can actually download the zip version of Visual Studio Code and you can run it from anywhere. So I usually have on my, on, you know, on my backpack, I usually have a USB stick that has VS Code running. Well, it's not running, but it's, it's installed. If I ever need VS Code on a machine, I can just run it like that. Okay, so now we've been able to install Node and switch between versions of Node without having permissions to, their to your machine. And we've been able to install VS Code without having permissions on our machine. So let's look at now what I can do with that. So, and I realize it's going to be a little hard to see in the bottom, but uh, if in the bottom here, if I say NVS menu, it actually lists me the options like it would in a regular uh, terminal window because it's integrated into all your terminals. Very cool, right? So I could set it up now put the version of Node that I want to use. If I had a default version of Node, that's where it would show up as well. But now there's this cool extension that I can use, which is the SharePoint Framework Toolkit, which is something that allows me to actually go put all the tools that I need to be able to manage and build USBFX solutions within VS Code. And because I'm writing VS Code as a user, my extensions also get installed as a user. I don't have to have special permissions. I don't have to be God of my machine to be able to install this extension. And this is an extension that Adam was talking about that allows you to do some cool stuff. And one of the things that it does is it looks at the dependencies that are on my machine. So, and if any of you have ever been to the instructions on how to get started with SharePoint Framework, there's like about 17 pages long of command lines you need to install. I'm exaggerating, it's not 17, but it's not that far, right? There's a lot of commands that you need to install, a lot of dependencies, a lot of npm install. Um, you can actually do that all automatically with using the uh, extension. But there is one little trick. If you go to the settings of the SharePoint Framework Toolkit, there is an option that allows you to control the version of node that you're going to be using or the node version manager. So by default, it assumes that everyone's using NVM. But if you're using NVS on your machine, you can just go to the settings and say, I will be using NVS uh, and it will now switch it automatically. And my presentation has decided to continue moving without me. So <laughs> I'll try to catch up here. Um, one of the things that you can do, and it's kind of hard to see on the screen here, but one of the things you can do as well is you can tell when you debug your, your web parts or your, your web parts or your applications, you can also tell it to use NVS built in. Um, so I see here if I can zoom in, make it, make it easier to read. But in my launch.json to launch my debug application, I can actually say that I want to use a version uh, at nvs.cmd, the command that I run to launch NVS and I can specify the version that I want. Now remember that launch.json and some of the settings can actually be associated with uh, the project you're working on. So that allows you to have a project that debugs one way and then another project that debugs a different way with different version of Node and things like that. But wait, if you order now, you also get the ability to go to the SPFX samples, right? So we were showing earlier, you go to aka.ms, slash spfx dash web part, you have a list of web parts. I'll pick a web part here, that one of the latest web parts that was deployed. And one of the cool things with every sample, if you're not familiar with how to use GitHub or things like that, 
we give you the option to actually download the version, the, the sample directly on your machine uh, as a zip file. So if I go to uh, download zip, come on there, right there, yeah. Um, I can actually just get the zip file, put it on my machine, and I can use that as inspiration. Because that's, again, these samples are not designed to be production solutions that you're going to use automatically to your machine. You're supposed to be using it to learn and to start your tasks, right? Not to say that they are not production ready, but the point is to teach you how to use them. Most updated, most re recent uh, samples use an NVMRC file on the solution folder. An NVMRC file, what it does is it tells Visual Studio Code and NVM and NVS what version of Node you want to use. So automatically for you, we go when we process these samples, we look at the version of Node. So the version that's for this web part is 18.17.1. Uh, but if I go to, if I go download another sample here, that's an older sample. This one uses a different version of Node. So I'll do the same thing. I'll download it. If I can find a download button. There you go. I'll unzip it. And then if I open it, this one also has an NVM RC, but this one uses a 18.18.0. So again, it's a different version of Node. But all I need to do when I start my command line is I type NVS space use, and that tells it to go use the current version of the solution automatically. And so that way I'm able to have multiple versions. And so here I, I stopped the whole downloading because I was downloading over uh, hotel Wi-Fi. Uh, and as much as I want to stay with you for the next hour, um, I figured I'd stop the video here. But this is now how you can use the tools with every solution. And the cool thing is once you're inside of a project and you have the SharePoint toolkit added, it automatically enables all the options for you um, that you can run like debug and analyze the, the dependencies and things like that. And it will use the version of Node that's associated to that project. All right. Let's wrap this up so we can give my friend Paolo some time. But today I've showed you how you can actually start configuring your workstation with installing Node, Node version switcher, and Visual Studio Code, as well as the SharePoint Toolkit to be able to build WebPart without having any administrative permissions to your machine. Later session, we'll talk about how you can deal with things like NPM JS and things like that, because your organization may have firewall rules that prevent you from being able to download the dependencies. But that's for another show.